All right, so guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Trice Too Easy. Let's go ahead and dive into this MLB World Series game. We got the Dodgers versus the Blue Jays. We'll look at the charts, the matchups, the pitching matchups, the trends. Um, we'll find an edge and we'll crack these folks. If you'd like to join my sports community and Discord server, the link's in the pinned comment and description. And if you want access to exclusive viewer perks for my community and tools that I use daily, you'll find those in the pinned comment and in the description of the video as well. Okay, guys, we'll get right into it. I was debating doing MLB because I was like, we kind of have, have already seen these two, these teams face each other so many times now. We've seen all the pitching matchups. Uh, and, and frankly, these games are insanely hard to cap because you have two offensive juggernauts with two bad bullpens. So, so, like, the games are really hard to cap. But, you know, let's get into it. I got kind of bored. Work got slow today. I have some extra time. And I know a lot of you guys just still like watching the MLB content and want, the, and want it. So I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, without further ado, we'll keep the video probably on the shorter side and just get right into it. Let's start by looking at the, at the money and what it's doing. So first things first, where's all the money going? Well, 73% of it is going on to the Dodgers. If you're betting this game, you're not on the run line. You're going to be on the spread. The Dodgers uh, on the run line, plus 102 on Fandles, one of the best prices you'll get. 73% of, of money with 66% of bets. And then if you take a look at the over-under, 87% of the money is on the over. That is a ridiculous amount of bets and money on the over. So what we can sum this up to is everyone's betting the Dodgers and everyone's betting the over, and that's kind of where we're at with that. If we take a look at the chart, though. This is for the run line. You'll see that it opened at 105, went down to around 100, went up to 104, and then just now got bought back down to that 101 range. It's floating. It's anywhere from plus minus 101 to plus 105. There's no no crazy drastic changes. Seems like they're just kind of trying to get it down to the penny, uh, you know, as sharp as possible. That's what Pinnacle does. They move off of off of where the money moves. This is not a crazy chart. It's not very alarming. The only thing I can say is it should probably be getting a little worse because of how much money's coming in on them, but it's still not like sounding any crazy alarms for me. Total over under chart, that eight is low. And as you can see, it started at 104. It's all the way down to 114. That's a massive drop and it makes perfect sense. Again, there's 87% of the money coming in on the over and the price is getting pushed down. This is what you'd like to see. This makes sense. And and I, I agree. I, I think you could probably see some runs in this game. It's going to come down to Blake Snell, obviously. But as you can tell, like this is standard stuff. Most of the money came in on it at plus 104. Books pushed it down to balance their risk. This is standard. There's no red flags that stand out here. We take a look at the pitching matchup. Blake Snell, uh, how have the um, Blue Jays done versus Blake Snell? Guys, Blake Snell's really bad for them. Uh, first of all, he's a, just an excellent pitcher with a ma nasty fastball. So his fastball is better than most. He throws it a lot. Blue Jays strike out a lot anyways, but their woe was they hit really hard and they hit the piss out the ball. So if they if they get a pitch they like, they're swinging, right? So yeah, they hit really hard, but he has a better than most fastball, so they're not contacting it as much. If you look at his changeup, the Blue Jays are not very good versus changeups. Their Wobas drop and their K rate goes up. And then versus the curveball, they're also awful. So most of his pitch mix, plus how good he is, is really bad for the Blue Jays. And historically, the guys ate the Blue Jays alive. He's done very, very good historically versus these Blue Jays. There's tons of red in here. There's low OPSs. He just murders them. As far as Trey, 21, you savage. We've already seen this, like I said, guys, but just a refresher. Fastball, slider, and a splitter mix. Fastball, the Dodgers kill. Sliders, the Dodgers actually struggle versus. And then the splitters, the Dodgers actually kind of struggle versus. The main problem is they just kill fastballs. They all they just kill that strikeout pitch. They kill that opening pitch. They force pitchers to throw sliders, first pitches, splitters, or secondary pitches as the first pitch because they'll jump on an early fastball, which results in a lot of walks, which is what we saw last time with him having three. So if I, and uh, again, for whatever reason, Outlier, which I use this every day. Again, it's in the pinned comment and description. Great product. Um, for whatever reason, still is not updated versus Trey Savage stats on here, sadly. But um, the Blue the Blue Jays, sorry, the Dodgers have not been terrible versus him. I think he got pretty lucky last game. Uh, but let me go ahead and cap it, and I'll compare, and I'll tell you guys kind of where I'm, where I'm leaning and what I'm thinking. So... We have the Blue Jays at the Dodgers, so they're on the road. You got 21, Trey 21 Savage versus Blake Snell. 
off the rip, massive pitching advantage for the Dodgers. Trey, 21 year savage, guys. We got to remember, he is still a rookie call up with like only eight games. Is he doing excellent? Yes, he is. But again, super high pressure, high leverage situation. You can't, I mean, you can't be in a worse spot as a rookie call up versus a more intimidating team than the Dodgers. This is hell for him. Um, obviously, the Dodgers are massive favorites because of the pitching discrepancy. Now, what I will say is what's scary is last time these guys saw each other, Blake Snell had the meltdown of the century. Five innings, eight hits, five earned runs, a home run, three walks, and only four strikeouts. This was awful, awful performance by Blake Snell. He really just had an absolute meltdown. On the flip side, you look at Trey is savage. My guy went four innings, four hits, two runs, three walks. Now, I must say, I think that all the stars aligned and there was just a lot of luck evolved. And I, I, look, I do not think that Trey gets this lucky again. I don't think, I mean, four hits and two runs is not good. Three walks is also not good. And four innings is not good either. He just kind of escaped and he was in trouble a lot. There was always runners on base. He just kind of kept getting out of it. I don't think that the Dodgers see him again and let him slide the way they did last time. I just don't see it happening. And I don't see a veteran, extremely good pitcher lefty like Blake Snell coming out here and having back-to-back -back meltdowns. I do not see a world where that happens. So I got to give a massive pitching advantage to the Dodgers tonight. I think that they'll find a way to win this game. Um, guys, do I think they win? Yes. But would I, would I, would I put my money on it? That's where I kind of struggle because it's like, man, these games have been so coin flippy. You might either team could pop off and score 20 runs. All it takes is one bad inning. Weather's not terrible tonight. Ball will probably get out the park. I think 21's in a bad spot, but I do think they'll pull him if he gets in trouble. I think they'll get him out of there quickly. The first five totals at four and a half and the full games at eight. You're getting a, a big, nice inning cushion to take that under. I'm going to be on the first five under four and a half in the full game over eight. That's where I'm leaning, guys. As far as props and home runs, I just don't have any today. I just don't know. Um, it's too hard to say. Your guess is good as mine. Find somebody with massive odds and just sprinkle it as a lotto for fun. And as far as as far as props, like I, I truly don't know what, what to expect from these games, except maybe a slow start and a, and a high scoring end because the bullpens are both awful. So. First five under four and a half, full game over eight. That's where I'm at. That's all I got for this series, guys. I'm just watching it as a fan. I'm not betting too heavy on it. Let's get out of here. Let's get a bag and let's crack these folks.